Berlin, 1936. As the world stood on the brink of World War II, a group of American athletes came to the Olympic Games in Nazi Germany to disprove Adolf Hitler and his dream of a master race. Among those athletes, former University of Miami diving great Marshall Wayne. But the story of how Wayne got to Berlin is as fascinating as the man himself. Of all the exciting outdoor sports, none offers such great beauty and perfect symphony of motion as diving. In the 1930s, South Florida was a mecca for diving shows. The performances were circus-like events featuring slapstick humor and daredevil stunts, but they also produced many of the great divers of the era. And now another Olympic victor and national champion, the popular Marshal Wayne. He executes what appears simple, but in reality is most difficult to perfect, the swan dive. Wayne and Olympic champion Pete Desjardins, father of the Hurricanes Hall of Fame golfer, were featured diving show attractions. Many of these shows were promoted by University of Miami graduate Jack Ott and his family. When I first saw Marshall Wayne, I remember him as a tall, skinny kid. And we wondered, who the devil is this guy going off of that ladder? And he runs up there and does a back flip off of this high, must have been 85 feet. We used to kid each other. He'd say, you want to feel something, feel a board, feel that muscle. You know, and the, he had a thigh muscle that was just as tight and as hard as that. I'll never forget it. And I thought, damn, I got a good muscle there too, but his was like a board. <laughs> Former Hurricanes diving coach Tom Gomp studied Wayne's style. Almost uh, everything he did was advanced for that time frame. Uh, he was doing quite a few of the dives that we're still doing now. Of course, in all diving competitions, you have to do the basic dives as well as the more difficult dives. Well, he did the basic dives as well as anybody's doing them today. Uh, the difference probably between diving then and now is equipment. Uh, not only equipment, but the caliber of the coaches. Wayne was a self-made diver who never had a coach. He competed for the Hurricanes from 1931 to 1934, and in 1935, he was named one of the best American men swimmers. Then came the Olympic Games of 1936 amid the specter of war in Europe. I know there was some sentiment that maybe we shouldn't even participate in the Berlin Olympics because the people felt that we might be endorsing the policies of Hitler by going there and playing his games. But uh, the athletes, I feel, that went to those games were a little bit under... Uh, a little bit more pressure than they might be in a current Olympic Games. In Berlin, Jesse Owens ran to four gold medals, and in the shadow of the Olympic Stadium, Marshall Wayne dove into history, winning a gold medal in the 10-meter platform and a silver medal in the 3-meter springboard. Marshall Wayne was every bit as important to diving and swimming as Jesse Owens was to track. Anybody that can win two Olympic medals in Berlin against uh, Olympic competition certainly uh, did an outstanding feat. Just like today's athletes, Wayne turned his medals into dollars after the Olympics, appearing in magazine ads for Texaco and Peel's Beer, among others. He later served as a lieutenant colonel in World War II and flew for Pan American World Airways. But his Olympic achievements will never be forgotten. I had a great thrill in meeting Marshall Wayne a few years ago, and I had an even greater thrill going to Berlin and going into this huge Olympic stadium and to walk up to the very podium there where uh, Marshall was crowned his Olympic uh, medal and seeing his name carved in that granite right there with Jesse Owens and all the great, uh, great athletes of the time, that was quite a thrill for me. Tonight, entering the University of Miami Sports Hall of Fame, Marshall Wayne. <laughs>